Have you ever wondered why some businesses succeed and others fail? Well, some are just luck, right place, right time. But one key factor that a lot of successful businesses do is called market research. In this video, we're gonna break down what it is, how to do it, and why it is so important. So let's get into it right now. Market research involves collecting and analyzing data about your target market to include what their needs are, what their behaviors are, what their demographics are, and other preferences that your target audience may have. This information can help you make informed decisions on many factors to include product development, pricing, distribution, and what kind of promotions may or may not work. To conduct market research, there are a few strategies here, and the most part is one, do surveys, two, you can do focus groups, three, you can do interviews, and four, the most common today is you can buy online analytics to big data. Now let's take a closer look at each of these methods. The first one is surveys. You guys have probably gotten email flyers about this before, everything from SurveyMonkey to people posting polls online. If you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and Facebook groups, which if you're not, please like and subscribe, you're going to go ahead and check things out and you're going to notice that sometimes I'll post thumbnails or titles and you, the audience, actually get to vote on my behalf. Iteration of that, I am learning what is more appealing to people and I'm improving my process. Very, very simple. Survey. There are a lot of things that you can employ. You can use SurveyMonkey, as I said before. You can use Google Forms. You can use Qualtrics and those can be distributed via email, via Facebook, Facebook and social media posts. Be sure that you design your questions carefully. Make sure you're getting the information you're, you need. If it's too specific, you may not get useful data. If it's too broad, you might be overwhelmed with data that does not matter to you. A focus group is a quantitative method that you gather a small group of people, preferably of a demographic that you are trying to target, and you start asking them questions interview style. That focus group should give you insights on the market, their attitudes, opinions, and notions of your market or your product. Right? If you want to design a specific product, maybe you give them three choices and you ask them questions around that. Alternatively, you can go for a more open-ended focus group where you aren't asking about your specific product, you are asking about the demographic in general, and then you can then later design a product around what they said. Another cool thing about this is in today's world, you can use Zoom or Google Meets and you can easily have a focus group and not actually have to come in person for it. So it's super, super great because you could say, hey, I'm looking for millennials age 25 to this, and I'll give you, you know, $2 to join this focus group. Now you're getting a good, a good cross section. And where in the past, I might have to struggle to get people to come to a place. So focus groups are a very good idea. Next one is interview. Interviews are very similar to focus groups, only they're one-on-one. -on -one. In this example, you're gonna be finding a specific person or several specific people ask, right? In a focus group, you could be influenced by group think where one person's saying something, so it sways the opinions of others. In a standard interview style, it's gonna be more legwork on your part, but you are going to get individual and untainted, uninfluenced data. Very similar, again, you can use Zoom, you can use Skype, conduct in-person interviews. You can go out on the street with a sign and say, hey, ask people questions, and if they answer, you know. And the last and biggest one, and the one that I use the most often, is online analytics and tool. Now that's gonna vary depending on what your industry is. For me, I do tons of market research in real estate, and I do short-term rentals, so I have Airbnbs. So I'm doing prop stream research. I'm doing MLS research. I'm doing AirDNA research. This is, again, a very real estate-focused market demographic. I'm trying to figure out what can rents be? What are people buying homes for? People selling homes for? What is the average interest rate today, right? Right now, it's very high because it's 2023 and the Fed's been raising rates. If we were talking two years ago, things were on fire, prices were sky high because rates were very, very low. You might be watching this right now. I have adjusted my business strategy and planning because the market tools allowed me to pivot my business because my old strategies will not work in the current environment. What are some examples? You can have Google Analytics, SEM Rush, A Friends. I'm doing website stuff for my YouTube channel. It's I'm using TubeBuddy. I am doing A-B testing research. I have Go High Level. You can use 
online tools, analytics, get a good grasp of what your audience is interested in. In my YouTube page, my homesteading YouTube page, number one search term is bees, followed by gardening, followed by potatoes. I'm making videos based on how they're finding. But my other YouTube channel about real estate and finance is about lean efficiency and finance. Those tell me what kind of things people are interested in. Most everything now has some kind of online analytical tool that you can use. So don't be afraid to dig in, look it up in your area and look up what tools are appropriate for your industry. Go ahead and get after it. Now I'm gonna go into why it is so important. Well, it's in critical for several reasons. You wanna make sure that you are in an industry and catching trends early so you can be one of the first movers on that trend helps you understand who your customers are and what their needs might be and preferences and yada, yada, yada. Maybe you identify some upsells. Maybe you identify some pitfalls and you pivot your whole company. Secondly, you wanna be able to stay ahead of your competition. If you have more data, you have a better opportunity to move faster than the next people in the market. You might be able to pivot away from something. It's so true, I know many, many business owners, when people compete against themselves, because they're constantly improving on what they know, what their demographics say, what their metrics say, they're not paying attention to the competition. The competition, they're paying attention to you, they often lag behind and fail because they don't have any original and new ideas. Well, where are you getting all those ideas? You are knowing what's going on in the market, you are then iterating, and then you are testing water. Fail fast, fail often. Elon Musk said it, if you are not failing. It means you are not trying. Failure is an option. It is best to learn the market demographics and try stuff rather than do months of research in advance, but you still want to be pointed in the right general direction. And finally, it can help you make less costly mistakes, right? Every business make mistakes. I was just talking about it. You can very quickly pop in, pop out, pop in, pop out. Try something. Did it work? Did it not? You get to find that out today instead of three months from now, six months from now, a year from now with your product launch that your market didn't even want. Or when you started development, your sunk costs are so high, you didn't catch that trend. Trend's dead. Congratulations. You just wasted five people, five team members' time for the last six months. You don't want to be that. You want to stay on top of the trends. Maybe you can tweak stuff. You're doing many things, but it allows you to catch things early on. In conclusion, guys, if you are a small company or a large corporation and you're just some cog in the wheel, I implore you to start looking at market research. Even if you are a department inside of a larger company, your job is to serve another department in your company so you can serve your end customer. You might even be doing market research on what that other department needs from us. What do they like from us? What don't they like from us? And trying to serve them better, which ultimately serves your customers better, which is ultimately why you have a job in the first place. So don't hesitate to reach out for market research. There's some links below to some tools that I use. And guys, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. I have a newsletter below, whether you're interested in gardening, homesteading, or finance and business. Remember, uh, with analytics today, some guy behind a computer screen, bloop, 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 bloop. oh, okay, they changed the code. I'm gone forever. You may never see me again because I said something that the algorithm doesn't like. So go down below, get on the newsletter if you want to stay in touch. I will be pushing all this stuff out, guys. Don't forget to go out there and look at the struggle. You can do this. Get out there, take action, guys. See you next time. Yeah!